What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Pack Only Road to Glory. As you can see on the screen, we've currently got 13 wins with 19 remaining. My aim this week, this month, was to try and get as many wins as possible and see how close we could get to that elite monthly reward. Um, this weekend, I've just, I've, I've felt so deflated playing FIFA. You know, I've just absolutely burnt myself out um, for this weekend league. And even though we had the extra day to play for champs, I still don't feel like it was, uh, it, I, I just don't feel like there was enough time for me to like actually play the game and, and be, you know, just not blowing my brains out with, uh, with frustration, with the stress, with the pressure. Um, so I ended up only going to gold three again on this account, but I still think gold three is like a decent, uh, decent, you know, point to be at. We, of course, um, we got gold two last week in less time, but, uh, just, I just couldn't be bothered. I think I still had 12 games left or so by the time I got to gold three. So, um, yeah, I, I could easily, I could potentially have got to elite, definitely would have got to gold one. Just couldn't be bothered. You'll see on the screen I'm making some changes to the team as well. I wanted to use one team for the remaining games just to see what impact that had on how I played and and uh, what I did and so on and so forth. So you're just checking it out right now. And before we get into the rest of the video, dudes, if you could drop a thumbs up on it, it would be very much appreciated. Your support on this series is awesome. We are hitting near that 10,000 like mark every video. So if you look at the like bar right now and it's less than 10k, just hit a thumbs up. Much appreciated. The first comment we've got, actually a very interesting one. Uh, Alvaro Martin says, Hey Nep from Spain, you probably saw the rules Van Basten said for football. I want to know if you like them and how would things like this taking away offsides or making unlimited subs affect real football and to FIFA? Thanks for your videos. I watched them all and they helped me improve my English. Well, thank you for the kind words. And I had I had heard like I was you know on Sky Sports News, obviously these um, these new rules were, were discussed and so on and so forth. But I want to go through them with you guys and, and have a discussion as to what they mean really, whether it's good or bad in my opinion, and whether or not that would be decent for FIFA. So the first one was removing the offside rule. Van Basten said football is more and more like handball. Personally, I'm curious about how football would work without offside. He cited hockey, which works without it, and believe teams could adapt with time. He added the game would be more attractive. The attackers would have more chances and there would be more goals, and that's what fans want to see. Now, I don't disagree with him that <coughs> it would be much better to see. Um, if 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 my if I, like my my history is correct, the reason why the offside rule was introduced was to stop goal hanging, like players that would literally be standing 10, 15, 20 yards offside, just standing by the goalkeeper, and then you know pump down the field, and that's it. They're on they're on on form, or, you know, in with a chance of scoring. I, I don't I wouldn't like to see that. And although as uh, Van Basten says, teams would adapt with time. It's not something that I think would be, uh, it, it, I don't think it would like take the game forwards. I think it would destroy a lot of the integrity of football. However, I will say this, it's, it's very frustrating when someone is a half a yard offside and that stops an attack. That's like, look, the offside rule is there to protect people from, as I say, literally goal hanging and, and giving themselves an advantage that isn't necessarily what you would like to see and, and how the game should be played. But when a player is like a half a yard offside or a yard offside or even three or four yards offside, for me that that's that's a bit whatever. Like you know, it, like there's been some really really nice goals disallowed because of a player's foot being three or four inches ahead of another's player's foot. So although I wouldn't like to see the offside rule removed, I would like to see the offside rule refined. And maybe a way to do that would to be like having a, I guess, either an actual line or like an invisible line or, you know, um, a, 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 an understanding that, let's say, take the 18-yard box, for example. Let's say the 18-yard box goes across the whole field. Obviously, you still have the 18-yard boxes itself, but like the, the main line where the, the, little, the semicircle is, the little uh, half circle, that goes all the way across. If you're ahead of that line, the offside rule comes into effect. If you're behind that line, the offside rule doesn't come into effect. Quite like how the halfway line is right now. If you're inside your own half, you just can't be offside. It just doesn't exist. You can't be offside. I think they should just advance that line so that as long as you're not past where the 18-yard the box line is, you can't be offside. I think that would be a relatively decent way to kind of counteract the, the 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 fact that then people can't just stand in the box by the goalkeeper so on and so forth 
but then also to the point where you could have far, far more attacking, creative, free-flowing football. Uh, but would love to hear your opinions on that. Scrap penalty shootouts and replace them with a take-on challenge. Anyone who saw Team Great Britain's amazing gold medal win in last year's Olympics against the Dutch will know what this entails. Where there is a draw in a knockout competition, we would not see a traditional shootout, but a head-to-head -head duel between keeper and attacker. Um, MLS used to do this a long, long time ago. They used to have the take-on challenge instead of penalty shootouts. And interestingly, in the league, you would get three points for a win, but you wouldn't draw. There were no draws. Like if the game finished one-one at ninety minutes, they would just instantly go into a take-on challenge. Do I like this? Not really. Do I like penalty shootouts? Not really. I don't think penalty shootouts are a representation of skill more than they are a representation of luck, pressure, bad luck, good luck. You know, like like people like in foot champs, for example. You know, you, you can lose a game on penalty shootout after just destroying the guy the whole game because he was a little bit luckier than you in the penalties, or you you know you missed a you hit a post where usually that shot goes in every time. In terms of real world football, the take on challenge. Um, I suppose it'd make it more exciting. It, like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm absolutely down for that. Take on challenge would be quite an interesting one instead of a penalty shootout. And, and it would be good for FIFA as well. The problem with FIFA is the shooting mechanics are so broken anyway that a take on challenge would just be goals after goal. Like, you'd, you'd, you know, there, there would be problems in FIFA. There would be problems. Um, punish ha deliberate handballs less harshly. Now, regardless of the, this actual specific one, it says Van Basten believes straight red cards are too harsh and that he would rather see a yellow card handed out or the possibility of a Sinbin style sa sanction as seen in rugby. Um, although those who remember Luis Suarez blatant handball on the line for the last minute for Uruguay against Ghana would maybe like to see this as too lenient. And yeah, it's a tricky one that. Um, you know, I, I think a deliberate handball to stop a goal scoring opportunity should indeed be a red card like you know you are you are using a part of your body that you're not allowed to use in football on purpose to stop the opposing team directly from scoring that should be a red card however quite like what this uh, article says p a potential you know a deliberate handball anyway i think sinbin would be great just get off the field for five minutes you've you know you've broken a rule you've used your hand you're not allowed to do that and so instead of punishing you individually and your team as a whole, we're going to punish you for five minutes and your team for five minutes, which will really, I, I think it would heavily reduce the um, the amount of wrongful doings in in, in, the, in football. I think I, I've, I've like kind of like always agreed with the Sinbin style mentality. My dad being a professional rugby player in his, uh, in his days, like the Sinbin's always been something that's been there in, in like in the back of my mind. And I think like when, when somebody does something wrong, having the team be suffering for a period of time would be more damaging to the player than like a yellow card or something. You know what I mean? So for example, if, if a player dives, go to the sin bin for five minutes, when he comes back, his teammates are going to be like, dude, do not do that again. Like, you, you know, you've, you've cost us five minutes here of having 10, you know, with having 10 men, which could turn a game that you was comfortably winning into a game that you're now tying or a game that you was tying in, in a, you know, you know, let's say you're in FA Cup semi-final and you're the minnow team and there's 10 minutes left and you're hanging on for dear life and then a player screws up, goes to the sin bin, he's going to have let his team down so very badly that it will make people think and change how they do things like that in the future. I don't know if punishing the deliberate handballs less or more harshly is something I'm interested in, but definitely the sin bin. Captain being the only one to speak with the referee, absolutely. It, it's, it's, it's hideous, it's cringy when seven, eight, nine, ten players are all around the referee screaming at him as if he can like understand, comprehend and, and evaluate what they're saying. Like, get off of him. Let him talk to the captains. Let him make his decision and accept it. And even if it's the wrong decision, he is the ref. He is the one in charge. He will be reprimanded by the people that he should be if he makes mistakes. Introducing a basketball foul, star foul system, um, and that's basically where five, five fouls and you're out, um, I don't, I don't agree with that because there's so many like niggly fouls and so many like contextual fouls in FIFA, in football and in FIFA, like you know where simply like a little shielding here and there could be deemed as a foul, but also could be deemed not as a foul. So I, I don't think that would be an interesting one for me. But as I say, I personally, I believe the sin bin would be a phenomenal thing to have in football. Reducing the number of games, I agree with. I think that you know that these players, uh, I mean, they're, they're professional athletes, so they can handle it, but. 
it like the the schedule conflicts are, are hilarious and you know the reason why Arsenal lost 5-1 to Bayern two consecutive times and for no other reason is because Arsenal have just been overworked that that's 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 the truth um, it's not the truth really but you know what I mean um, making the last 10 minutes flow better I didn't really understand what they meant with that one um, and I think this was the last one as well it was indeed I, I don't I don't really know what making the lot like it said something about the ball rolling every 10 minutes or something I, I think the article was wrong but making the last 10 minutes flow better I, I think time wasting in in general should just be uh, like I think like with basketball and like with NFL, it would be quite difficult to implement in um, in football, but I think it would be worth it. I, I think there should just be maybe a refined game time, but clock stopping. Because right now, if you actually if you if you take the time the ball is in play for a 90 minute period, I think it's only actually in play for anywhere between 60 and 70 minutes. There's like 10 to 20, sometimes 30 minutes where you know, a throw-in's being taken or a corner's getting set up to take or substitutions are being made. And that then turns into three, four or five minutes of injury time. Um, I think when a corner's be about to be taken, the, the, the clock should be stopped. You know, when as soon as that ball goes out of play, the clock stops. And maybe that means that we refine the time to a 70-minute match or an 80-minute match, you know, 35-minute halves or 40-minute or 40 halves instead of 45-minute halves. Um, but uh, that's definitely something that I would I would like to see because then it would stop time wasting. Other than like you know your actual time wasting of passing around the defence and stuff, which then invites pressure and causes problems. But it would stop a goalkeeper, you know, putting the ball on, going back to the post, kicking the mud off his off his studs. Oh no, go back up to the ball, walk it to the other side of the box, put it down. Oh, I've got to kick the mud off the post, you know, kick the mud off my boots again. Oh no, not happy with the ball again. Go and put that down. Oh no, oh got time my shoelace up. Like it would stop all of that, and that would be great. It would be great for the game. Like, there's some stuff there with Van Basten that I think, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty logical and makes some sense. But there is quite a lot of stuff there that I seem to think is relatively illogical and would incredibly and hugely define the shape of football in a completely different manner to what we currently have. Um, and I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing because if it goes wrong and people fall out of love with the sport. That's it. It's game over. You know, uh, it's, it, you, the, these things cannot be taken lightly. And, and me just talking about them here, I've probably said some things as well that make absolutely no sense to some of you. And I'm more than happy to discuss that with you guys in the comment section below. So let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel. That was that, guys. That got us to 18 wins with the team we see there. Uh, Thalvin, pretty good. Ben Yedda, not the best. But uh, after looking at the team there, guys, we're now going to go into a live section of the game and see if we can complete some of the new SBC marquee matchups that are out. I will be right back. So guys, I've called it a day um, at 18 wins. I've, I've been struggling. I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm just burnt out this weekend of playing FIFA. I don't know what it is. Usually, I really look forward to the weekend league. I look forward to getting in as many games as I can. And I usually run out of time rather than give up. Uh, as you can see, there's still six hours left. I've got nine games. I've got plenty of time to play them. I, I have no will to play them. I think we've done all right to get 18 wins. Um... You know, we're going to get that gold pack, the two mega packs, the coins, which is all nice. We've got the draft to enter at some stage through this week whilst those man of the match cards are still in packs, which is brilliant. And uh, just in general, like, uh, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about, like, the longevity of this month. Um, and to get to Elite 3, we would need 120 wins, which was 24 wins a week. We fell short by three wins on week one. Uh, so we would have had to make those up one week, getting 27 wins. And I just I can't do it. I just I just don't have the the, the willpower. So gold is where we're going to aim for, uh, which is 82 wins. We're already halfway there, give or take, and we've only played two weeks. Um, so if I got gold three three more weekends in a row, that would be 54 more games. That would be plenty in gold, and we'd get that three red in form pack, which would actually just be amazing for the series. What I'm hoping is over the next three or four weeks when we get to that stage where we get those three red informs or for the next month, I'm hoping our team is so much better that we're able to compete a little bit more consistently because even though I've got two decent teams and, and I really tried this, I tried to go to one team and use fitness cards towards the end and it is still, I, I, as I say, I'm, I'm just burnt out. Like I, I just wasn't interested. And like Sanson, he's, he's fun, he's decent, but uh, he's actually got really bad stamina. I don't know what his actual in-game stamina is, but he was dead all the time. Um, ben Yedder is just useless. I mean, look at that. 16 games, 5 goals, 7 assists. He's just useless, so he doesn't fit the team. We need to upgrade Pedro. He hasn't really been amazing for us. Uh, Thalvin here, 
He's been alright. He's, he's, to be fair, he's missed quite a lot of really easy opportunities. Maybe he's not the card that I thought he was going to be for us. The defense is fine. I would like to upgrade Luke Shaw where possible and potentially Jack Butlin for like a De Gea if we could ever get one. Um, it's a shame that I can't fit Jovetic as a starter in this team and have to bring him on as a sub because he is the best card we've got. I know uh, if you actually compare his stats to uh, Thalvin, Thalvin has got everything better on the face. Obviously, that doesn't that's not in-game stats, so there could be some differences there. But um, uh, yeah, you would expect uh, him to just be a bit, bit, bit better and he's just not. I tried bronze benching. With, I've been working on some theories regarding matchmaking. Um, if any of you guys follow my second channel, you would have uh, you would have seen those theories and heard about them. From what I've experienced, it hasn't really made a difference. To be fair, um, we're up to like ten thousand coins, which is quite good. I sold some items. I might take a look real quick whilst we're on the video. This might be a longer episode here today. Um, we sold uh, this guy. I got him in a bronze pack. Um, I, I opened a few bronze packs. I've started doing a bronze pack. This guy as well in a bronze pack. Um, this guy Cranchar we sold for six k. Um, I've started doing bronze packs off video just because they're they're just tedious and you can see here there's a lot of stuff here that hasn't sold yet um, that I'm trying to get on and, and sell on and it, whether it sells or not is uh, is debatable but hopefully it does hopefully we get rid of a few of these this dude there's when I when I packed him there wasn't many I'm hoping he sells for 8k it doesn't look like it does but uh, what's his name L E I Wakabesi let's just let's go L E I Wakabesi then I've got all these golds on the trade pile which hopefully one day or another will come in useful for us we'll have to go and have a look let's go and look at whack what watch him be uh watch him be like 300 coins or something now as well because that's typically how it goes there are there are times where there are not many of them on yep i mean there, and there's not many on the market which is why i think there was a stage where he looked like he was worth about eight nine thousand coins because there was two up if i remember correctly when i packed him but now as you can see this one's at 1 1.4 7 1 1.2 4.3 and 10 so somebody did buy the 1.2 or the 1.4 expired all of a sudden there's only three on the market it looks like his price is really high turns out it's not that high there are a new marquee matchups out though let's see how close we can get to completing any of those if any at all of course um we're quite close on the uh, the south american tour to completing that as well Leicester versus Sevilla. I've actually got a crap ton of Sevilla players. I, we need two Leicester and two Sevilla though. I don't know if I've got that. Um, let's take a look at Leicester first. I've got two. What's the team rating here? No team rating. Players has to be exactly gold. So we can take Albrighton and Simpson. Now I know, as I say, I know I've got a lot of um, Sevilla players. It's just whether or not they're players that I'm happy to get rid of. But yeah, it's not. Like, Ben Yedder and Nzonzi would have to be the two to go, and I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm, it's just unfortunate, but I'm not. So I can't complete this one, which is a shame. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach against Schalke. Now we need uh, four players between the two squads. Um, Borussia Mönchengladbach. We have none, so if we don't have any Schalke players... I know I've got, I've got... Oh, I've got... Ooh, we could... We could do this. Um... I don't know if it would be that effective, mind. What chemi We need night. I can't. I don't think I can get ninety chemistry with uh, with these dudes. I'd, I'd need to put a Bundesliga goalkeeper in. Uh, is there a rating for this one? Seventy nine rated as well. So those defenders would get the chemistry. Um, let me see if I've got an Argentinian striker. I don't know if I have. And I can't, I can't use another Bundesliga player because it's max five. Um, I don't think I could get 90 chemistry out of this because I've already lost 4, 8, 12 points. And you can only get as, mu as much as 110 points. So I can't, even, I can't do this one either. That's, that's pretty sad. Uh, Dallas against Pachuca. Pachuca. Um, I believe I've got two bronze Dallas players. I, I would like to have thought so. Um, MLS FC Dallas. I've got one Dallas player. And the other one is the Colombian League, uh, FC Pachucha. Uh, it's, sorry, Independiente Medellin, isn't it? Oh, no, wait. FC Pachucha. Pach what? what league is that? What league is that? I don't know what league it is. Was it here? It's not here. I don't know what league. <laughs> I don't know what league I'm supposed to be looking at. Is it? It's not there. It's definitely not there. It's not Swiss. It's not Russian. It's not Irish. It's not Turkish. It's not. So it like it sounds like a like a, a South American team, doesn't it? FC Pachuca. Um, won't be Denmark. Won't be Sweden. Might be Chile. 
Come on. It's not chilly. Won't be Saudi. Won't be Polish. Won't be Dutch. Won't be Finnish. Won't be, oh, no, it won't be Greek. Won't be Australian. Won't be Korean. Is it, it Mexican? It sounds Mexican. It's not Mexican. Have I gone part? Is it here? Is, are they just under P for Pachu? I don't know what club this is. Pachucha. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to quickly Google this. Pachucha. FC Pachucha. Mexican. I looked in the Mexican league and they weren't there. There they are. Right. Uh, we don't have any, so we can't do that one. <laughs> what a waste of uh, of time. Medellin versus River Plate. Now I knew I, I knew we needed Medellin. We didn't have any Medellin players, so if there's no River Plate players either. We literally can't do any um, any SBC at all, which would be pretty sad. Would it, we don't have any. We, I have nothing. I can't do any of the SBCs right now, so that's pretty sad. Um, let me just show you the stats real quick, guys, uh, of the players, and then uh, then we'll get out of here. As I say, like 18 wins, we get a 50k pack, a couple of mega packs. Hopefully, we can improve this squad. I think going forwards, I'm gonna just focus on one team and use fitness cards. Uh, for me, it, it just feels better, you know, it, it does just feel better. So when we look at the player stats, uh, we've now got 47 games with Jovic. He's also our top scorer and our top assister. Um, you've got Pedro's done pretty well. Matic and Kante are doing uh, all right. Eight goals for Kante and 11 assists. Two goals for Matic and 11 assists. Um, ben Yedder's a bit meh, not going to lie. I'm not overly impressed with him. Bebe hasn't really done much. Dalvin has been all right. But this, guy is going to be the end of the video uh, for today. If you haven't enjoyed this, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.